Hello folks, welcome back to the channel, former Envoy Extreme here. Here we are on the 20th of March 2024, and we've got a jam-packed full of mods today. And as always, all the timestamps for each and individual mod will be linked down below in the description somewhere. So yep, yeah. anyways, let's get started, and first of all, we're going to start off with the Irrigation Sprinkler Heads, this is by ProGar Modding. 2.31 megabytes to download, one slot on console, and this is purely a decorative item. That sort of simulates the idea of irrigation sprinkling and that. Got a variety of widths and that and sizes from 12 meters to 33 meters. So I think this one here is 27 meters. So yeah, you can see, nice little sprinkler heads, and it goes all the way along here, to the other end, and yeah, each of these poles are a variety in the length, and yeah, it just adds to that realism of trying to simulate sprinklers out in farm sims, especially with consoles at least, with, one thing we can hopefully with FS25 is have irrigation of some sort. But anyways, you'll find this under build mode, under de decorations, under fences, and right at the end, so yeah, we got sprinkler heads, 12.2 meters, 18.2, 24.2, 27.2, 13.2, and 33.2, so, so, try to put one down, so, say here, place it down, yeah, it only costs nine quid. Yes, that's thing you also be having is collisions with a object, so you need to make sure you got enough space at, around the diameter. So, so yeah, let's say if this is a circle, we go out to here. So yeah, collides with object because yeah, it's hitting something around. Most likely that bell, but let's go with something a bit smaller. So right in the middle. Send it out. And there we go. So sort of see as we go around in a circle. That simulates the diameter of the sprinkler head. So have a couple of these down in the fields. And you can just keep on going. Bang. Extend as long as you want to so all the way to up there but so yeah it's something handy and yeah again it doesn't do much it's purely a decorative item but just the idea behind it and the sort of simulated realism is all you need and yeah there is a option for pc with the mod place fences anywhere and this could be parallel to make it more easier with the v key so if you're from PC, that'd be a good bit of information to know. But anyways, this is the Irrigation Sprinkler Heads by Progar Modding. Next, we've got something that, yeah, absolutely, this is a massive mod. This is the Modern House Set by Red Phoenix, and it is 167.72 megabytes to download. Slot count is one for each of these houses, and yeah, essentially this is a pack of houses, and there are nine different texture sets, 13 different house types, mirrored and non-mirrored, one variation of a house with solar panels or no solar panels, you do get income, just the aesthetics of it. So. When you do the math, all together, with all those different house variations, you have 468 houses. So yeah, first of all, for, as I do with most of my mod reviews, I set things up, I place every building down, and yeah, got to the point where I was like, okay, this is going to be way too much for my... Just for what space I've got available, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show off each of the individual house types. So, first of all, you'll find these under 
decorations and other. So yeah, you do have a variety of options. So starting off with house one. So yeah, you've got a mirrored white soda, a mirrored yellow soda, a mirrored dark brick soda, grey brick soda, light red soda, dusty grey, alpine blue, how was that, verdigris, pastel, and then, yeah, white, so, got those different colour op well, options, or texture colour options. They also have as a non solder option. And then yeah, you've got that mirrored option, so let's just compare. So let's say we want this mirrored dusty grey solar. And let's get the unmirrored dusty grey solar. Is there an actual difference in the two? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, I get it. Now, what the difference between mirrors and a mirror? So, let's say you want to have a rack of houses and that, or a row of houses. So, yeah, you really can't really see much from the front since at the front it's perfectly symmetrical. But if you go to the back, just take this one on the right, you got a window, and another window to the left. And the mirrored version is the same but opposite, so. Now it's symmetrical, if that makes any sense, so yeah. Anyways, back into our decorations and others. So yeah, we've got our house types 1. Next we've got our house types 2. So yeah, it's like going through all the menus here is absolutely difficult, so yeah. This is house type 1. This is house type 2, so something a bit bigger with a garage. Then you got your typical, in a way, you tend to see this in the UK a bit as well, and other places, I'm sure. Like that brick and mortar buildings. So that's house type 3. Then you got your house type 4. And yeah, just remembering, this is house type 5, so again, brick and mortar with a garage. Six, seven, eight, so got a bit of a more of a semi detached housing. So that's the thing, like, you got so many options and varieties. And I think that's house type nine. Ten is your more, well, say your typical American, or at least, at least your stereotypical American house where it's a bit more square shaped. Then you got 11, what was that? Yeah. 11, 12, 30. So yeah, we've got 11. Similar to as we've seen before, but we've got an L shaped option. Now on to 12. Again, similar to the first ones we've had, but with a little car port. And then lastly, again, something similar to all the others, just slight variations, and yeah. It's 468 houses and so yeah, you can get creative with this and God forbid, with all due respect, if this is used on a map with a high, let's say, let's say Evergreen Valley, that's 700 megabytes download. If this becomes a required mod on that map for decorative items, that's another 167, 167 megabytes of file size to take up in your mod hub storage so yeah hopefully this doesn't become one of those dutch mods where it's used everywhere on other maps than that but anyways this is the modern house set by red phoenix next so with the decoration stuff we're moving on to our buildings and technically this is an update this is the easy still shed set by top ace 888 4.37 megabytes to download, and yeah, this is an update. And normally, this is a shed. However, changelog 1.0.1.0 goes as following removed non visual collisions from still shed 
S, so I'm assuming that means still shed small, so yeah, sh small, medium, large. I've got my notes. But also, there's also an option for these now to be used as warehouses. And slot counts respectively are 5, 5, and 6 slots. And you find these under build mode, so these are your normal version. So, got your small, medium, and large. That's what it was before the update. However, go to silos. So yeah, we've got your got your small, which is holds what 500 items. Got your medium, and then got your large. And yeah, do you also have a large with warehouse front? Ah, yeah, so I did miss that, so that's my bad, but yeah. All these are five slots, so five, five, five for the small, medium, large. But for the large with the front, so it is this one here. So yeah, compared to, it's got something a bit of a wider entrance, or if you want something long and narrow, the front version, that is the one with six slots, so... Small will hold 500 items, the medium will hold 1,000 items, and the large will hold 1,500 items. So yeah, this is your pallets, bells, and big packs and all that. Unlike with the other bell and pallet storage we had previously by Argosy Gaming, I haven't gone and tested this, so I'm assuming... Most bell types, if not all, would be accepted, but don't quote me on that. But anyway, so yeah, I thought it should be a little worthy mention. So yeah, this is the update to the Easy Steel Shed set by Top Ace 888 Next, we've got the old fuel tanks. This is by AEN Design. 4.25 megabytes to download. Slot counts are two slots for these rusty ones. Uh, for the newer, cleaner versions, they are free slots. So, essentially, these are diesel containers. Will hold 3,000 liters. So, yeah, let's go and fill up. So, yeah, you've got diesel. And, yeah, there's no options for the death or anything like that. But, anyways, you'll find these under build modes, under containers. So yeah, 750 for the old rusty ones. And then 1,500 for the slightly newer ones. And there is this one here. This did confuse me because... Yeah, we got this one here. New diesel tank. Which matches that. However, we've got the same version but slightly rustier. However... Having a look, you can sort of see between what is showing on here and what is showing under the Bilbo section, this should be a darker green. Yeah, something like this, but darker green maybe. Because, yeah, that's got the same weathering effect as in the little photo here. That is matching the photo. That's matching the photo. But that one ain't. That is a dark. Well, that is a orange, rusty version. But it should be like a slightly green version, I'm not sure, so... Yeah, because it says red and green versions. Versions, as in the plural. So yeah, I'm not sure on that. Also, yeah, I actually like the little details as well, like the little animal decal details in a way. But yeah, like the day upkeeps as well is 20 bucks for the warm versions and 15 bucks for the new versions. But yeah, overall, not too bad. Like, despite that little confusion, a small 3,000 litre canister for what? Less than 1,500 quid? 750 at its cheapest, so. If you want something cheap, small, and can be placed pretty much down anywhere on the farm, then. Sure, use the old fuel tanks by AEN Design. Next, we've got the Bunker in a Wooden Shed. This is by Agri Kevolution. 9.4 megabytes to download. Slot count is 8 slots, and yep, essentially it's a wooden shed. 
that can you use to store pallets, grain, tractors, or whatever you as you wish. Costs twenty three thousand to buy. So yeah, that's as it comes standard. No lighting, of course, because it's a wooden shed. But yeah, like the worn on the wooden hat, the weathering, got the corrugated metal, sort of like the concrete floor. Actually, ain't too bad. I like that weathering effect. You can sort of see like bits of like mold in that on sides, like down here. Is that mold? I'm not sure what it is, but yeah, overall, good level of details. I like the cross beam work. I approve of that. Yeah, it shows as a light here, so it should be a light switch, but I can't find it. So I did notice that when I was getting sort of tested it up. But yeah, I can't find a light switch. So my assumption is most likely this will turn on at night. So yeah, have, have a look. And there's no light switches whatsoever, so this will turn on at night. But yeah, sort of as an example, I sort of tested with getting a little trainer and conveyor. Loaded up with potatoes and yeah, just unload. And yeah, I think I was like two, three hundred thousand years or so at least, so Ferns wasn't keeping track and that, but yeah, he got away with a lot of storage of items. Pretty large. So yeah, that is the bunker in a wooden shed by Agri Evolution. And yeah, oh yeah, I forgot where you can get this from, my bad. So yeah, you'll find this under pill mode, under sheds. Oh god, I'm professional, don't worry. So yeah, 23 grand, 8 slots goes down to 1. No colour options. But yeah, so that is the bunker in the woodshed by Agri Evolution. Next. Alrighty then, so we've got something quite unique. So this is the Addable Triggers by Farmer 5 Tom. 2.55 megabytes to download. Slot counts are as following, first of all. One slot for the workshop, one slot for the bell and pallet storage, five slots for the hayloft, three slots for both of the cell stations, all of the productions are three slots, and the farmhouse is two slots. Why did I say all of that? Have you ever had troubles with having space for productions or workshops or silos and that? Then don't worry no more, because with the animal triggers, these only cost five grand. And yeah, you can create a farm or whatever you want. So you've got buildings, for example, on Ravenport 22, there are buildings that are there physically, but they're non-accessible and you still want to use them. What do you do? Use this. So, got a variety of triggers. So, you got your workshop trigger here. You got your bell and pallet storage. This will hold 250 items. Ignore the silos, that's just there for decorative, but so yeah, you got your like hayloft here. And see what you mean. Let's say if this was a unusable whatever can't demolish building. Just get this and then yeah, you just whack it down. Obviously enable free mode in terms of building, so you can get so yeah, like me setting up, actually didn't do too bad, slight rotation issues maybe, but apart from that, if you didn't know, you think that would have blended in. Next we've got our cell station, so got a cell station there, and you got a cell station there. And in terms of prices, so if we have a look, so for shopping that, okay, compared to cell station generic more or less it's the same in terms of it matches the average price of the map maybe some slight variations but apart from that so you got your cell station for like your grains so that's the cell station generic but then also you've got cell station for your production items so you yeah, have go to our cake so you have cell station to Compared to the other prices, yeah, it's pretty much average, so it's not a X amount more or less you'll get. 
a good thing like with a lot of these will come with signs, so this little bench here is your farmhouse, so the left one as you see here is gonna be your wardrobe. And your right side is gonna be your seat trigger. And then as we head over here we got your tail store and Wait a minute, why am I having collisions? Alright, that must be an awkward one I must have placed down. I guess it's because I placed this in front of a another production maybe. But yeah, so yeah, you got your tail shop here. You got your sugar bill. So yeah, if you got any productions you want to place down, then yeah, it will all be good. And in terms of capacities and that, having a look around, did a little bit of tinkering around. Uh, yeah, I know it says it in the mod description, but I'd rather test these. So all of them are the same as the base game. And I think again, I love these like these little like images and that. So you've got a bunch of buildings and that. You like a bunch of these down. Which ones? Which? Because they all look very generic. Yeah, may, may I place some of these down a bit awkwardly, so... Actually, maybe, in terms of placing it down, not to, yeah, I think use the free mode in that. But anyway, so, where do you find these? So, starting off with the farmhouse, you'll find this under buildings and farmhouse. You got your sh seat trigger there, and you actually can place multiple of these down so you can have like multiple farmhouses as you wish your workshop will be found under buildings and tools so that is your workshop trigger under containers there is nothing nope there's no slow extensions under silos you got your hayloft here and your bell and pad storage, so yeah. All of these are one slot on console, so that's the thing, like one slot is like looking around like placing these down. A lot of these are one slots. So, now yeah, a couple of them are like two or three. But still compared to for example, like go to our normal productions and that. Oh, I don't know, let's go pick a basically one. Yeah, you're looking at ten. Yeah. No, ignore the BGAs, so yeah. 14, 13, 17, 12, 15, 12 slots and that, so... Overall, you're saving at least 10 slots. Minimum, so... But anyway, so yeah, buildings and silos. So yeah, you've got your heat off and bell and pad storage. No other options. And yeah, for your production, so we'll go on to the factories and at the end, so yeah, all your base game production, so nothing new, just one of those where if you've got a building, you can't use it, place one of these down, then all of a sudden that old wooden shed that can't be used is now a great processing facility, so you get really creative and very useful with some of these, so yeah. He has like issues with his tear sore, so. So yeah, place that down. And yes, because yeah, like how weird collisions. Again, could be because of the buildings. Could be where I've got everything so closely put together because I wasn't sure of like of all his houses there. I thought. Ah, right, so. Maybe when you're placing these down. The best advice would be is so let's go pick a random one again. So rather than you know placing it like normally, toggle free mode. And then yeah, do you have collisions? No, so that would be my advice is when placing these down, make sure you toggle the free mode. So for one doesn't deform the terrain, doesn't change the textures on the ground. Alright with the hazard box is a little iffy thing. 
that can easily be resolved by just turning off interactive zoom markers. Yet you still get your signs, but apart from that, that is all good. So yeah, that is the addable triggers by Farmer Five Tom. And yeah, one last thing actually, it said in the description of it says there is a silo. It says farm heat loft, yes we've got object storage, yes we've got workshop, yes farmhouse, yes. And also it says silo. I can't find a silo at all. So because yeah, like a thoughtful case I've missed it, and that's set up this morning. But no, we've got your base game stuff. The non to run mod, so got your, your heat loft, yes. BMP storage, yes. And then yeah, that's all other mods I've got enabled in that. Yeah, I'm just going through that, and nothing else is popping up. And I've been around like self side extensions, no. I've looked around everywhere, so like under decorations and all that, nothing's popping up here. No one could be there, so maybe it needs a small update for adding that silo function, but apart from that, this is a very useful and helpful mod. And certainly one of those I recommend, and something I actually may be using very soon on an upcoming Let's Play series. Because yeah, five grand for a production chain. That's an absolute bargain like, compared to 100, 200 grand you're usually paying for some of these stuff. Crack on with it. Make the most of it. So, yeah, this is the Addable Triggers by Farmer 5 Tom. Next. For our final couple of mods of the day, we're on to our equipment. So, first of all, we've got the Rumako U436H-HP 4 and 4.5 four meter pack. This is by GMZ, 33.84 megabytes to download. Slot counts are 9, 13 and 10 slot counts respectively. I'll show that in a sec. So essentially these are a 4 meter uh, cultivator. And then yeah, you got your two 4.5 meters. And there's a difference in these two. For one, it's the mountain. So... The standard 4 meter and the 4.5 meter are semi mounted versions. However, no, sorry, this one is yeah, the premium one. So, yeah, that is the standard version. This one, however, is a mounted version. And you can probably tell like, by the linkage and that, like how it's all linked up and that, like, the hydraulics and that. But the difference is in the tyres. We'll also go and test those in a sec. But anyway, so where do you find these? Under tools and cultivators. And scroll down to the end. So yeah. 9, 13 and 10 slots respectively. All goes down to 1. So yeah, for your U436 4.5. You do have an option for wind shares, yes or no. So yeah, that's just things at the bottom of the disc arrow. Main color options, you got blue, blue two, add blue three. Design color, you got black, blue, blue two, and blue three. And it's similar with the four meter version. So yeah, that's four and a half meters we just looked at. Four meters, exactly the same however moving on to our four and a half meter pro version so yeah we we'll go and have a look so yeah we've got a lot of customizable options so under wheel brands we've got treadboard standard white tires back to standard bkt we've got standard first lines we've got standard wise back to standard and yeah back down to treadboard Fenders, no or yes. So yeah, that is these on the back. That's some little nice fenders. Moving now, we've got support wheel, no or yes. So yeah, that is these wheels on the front. Personally, I'll say yes for that. And then lastly, you got your wind, wind shares, yes or no. Car options, exactly the same as before. 
so I'm not going to go over it too much. So yeah, what is the difference in these? So, let's go and have a look. And yeah, I did forget to say, in terms with working speed, all these are, what, 13 kilometers an hour? So yeah, 8 miles an hour, 195 horsepower requirements for the 4.5 meters, and 170 for the normal 4 meter version, so... First of all, the uh, the helicopter. So yeah, for our four meter version, this is oh no, sorry, your standard four and a half meter. So yeah, we've got an option to unfold. And as always, I do love the animation of this. And yeah, I think the yeah, already's pretty heavy in that. Yeah, looking at the waves, five tons, six point seven tons. So yeah, these are pretty heavy. And you can tell, like, even with the John Deere here, even with some of our case large tractors we've got, like, these ones here, like, the Magnum ones, you can sort of see the suspension dip in that, so... Personally, when recommending using this, I strongly suggest using some form of weight, at least one and a half ton, just to have that bit of counterbalance. Because what you'll find is, with something like this, and all that weight is on the back of the tyre, it's going to lift the front wheels up. And then when you try to turn that or find control your cultivated or plowing or whatever, it's going to affect that. So yeah, I'm going to unfold this and drop it down because... I want to have a little look at this one here, because I'm pretty sure this is the pre version, is it? Nope, that's premium. Pro version here's one with the tire, so yeah, slight difference in how they're mounted. And yeah, in terms of the controls, so it's not that one. See so yeah, for L1 and then right to analog stick up and down. That raises and lowers those wheels. So let's say you lure the cultivator into the ground, you're thinking, oh, we're not low enough. Just slowly drop that down, raise the wheel up, then next you know, it's proper in the ground. Or if you're thinking, oh, it's too deep down on it, just a couple inches less from the top soil, just, yeah, lower the wheels. Obviously not all the way down, but sort of semi-imitate this in a way with how much dip you've got, so with how it is at the moment, so will this work? Let's go into another field now. Let's we'll get a different textures and that. See, there we go. We're doing it all good. And in terms of raising or lower, it doesn't seem to affect the engine in any way, shape, or form. But again, there's always a good thing to test in that, as you never know. But yeah, raise and lower, lovely jubbly, no other options or anything like that. So at the end of the day, yeah, it's a 4 meter and 2 and a half 4 meter versions of a Romaco Coast Fair. But yeah, this is a good brand we've seen recently come to FS22. And I'm pretty sure most, if not all, of this is by GMZ, so more brands better. So yeah, that is the Romaco U436 HP 4 and 4.5 four meter pack by JMZ. Next, we're on to our final mod of the day. On to our final mod of the day, we've got the Lizard FK Intense Pack. This is by Black Sheep Modding, 25.25 megabytes to download. Slot counts are 7, 8 and 9 slots respectively. And essentially, these are fertilizer and lime spreaders. However, this is with the evolution of modern agriculture. Now, with the increased need of efficiency in that around the farming out with machines and spreading slime materials, the Lizard FK Intense is designed to spread fertilizer or lime with its two arms, each 11 meters long. It allows for a high precision of spray material. 
saving up to 50%. So, for saving 50% in spreading, actually, I won't be complaining on that with that. Similar with the 6 ton spreader we got by A2 Studio. However, this is more realistic. This is, this is a more realistic version. So yeah, we've got some different options. We've got the FK110 over here, if I'm sure. Yeah, we've got the 110, 220, and 330. Where do you find these? you find these under Tools and Fertilizer Spreaders. Go to the end, so yeah. Got your 110, 220, 330, spread fertilizer and lime. And turns with working speed, all of them are 30 meters, miles per hour each, not meters. And yeah, slightly different in capacities and that. So for your 110, 50,000 liters, no options for capacity, at 50 meters working width. For the 220, we've got 22,000 in capacity and 80 meters of working width. And then finally, we got the 330, 33,000 in capacity, 22 meters of working width. And it all goes back down to one slot count afterwards. Horsepower requirement actually is quite interesting. So for the small one, 100 horsepower, for the medium one, 200. And typically for the largest of the pack, it's 300 horsepower. So, all the configurations and options are the same. So, I'm going to stick with the 330. So, first of all, we've got Will Brands. We've got Treadborg, Standard, Michelin Standard, BKT Standard, Frenstein Standard, and back down to Treadborg. Additional lights, we've got No or Yes. See so yeah, that adds lights to the side there, so off and on. Turns with the front. Can't see any more lights in at the front. Beacons, we've got no. Type 1. I'm guessing this is going to be at the back again. So yeah, back on the top, so you've got type 1, type 2, type 3, type 4. Type 5, Type 6, and Type 7, Type 8, or back to none. Worn triangles, what, no or yes? So something like, if I was going to say, oh, I want it done a certain way. Yeah, maybe something like that with beacons and that. Additional lights, yeah, sure, why not? And then turns with colour options, we do have many. You usually got the orange. However, you also got your base game palette, so you want to mix it up, like say, oh, go with bright pink on that. Design colours, go with the white. So that changes the main body in that. Design colour changes the little spread bits on sides. And the rims, obviously, is the rims. So yeah, let's go and take one of these for a little whack around. So yeah, let's go and grab the big one. There's no adjustment options or anything, so... In terms of what you can do, press L1 and X to fold and unfold. And yep, yeah, I do like that animation. So let's fold it, let's go and unfold it. Then L1 and left on D-pad will change or open and close the cover. So yeah, let's go and yeah, pick a field that I have wrecked. Yep, yeah, I do need to fix these, and I will do it for before the next mod review. So there we go, let's go and lower this. Oh no, no, do need to lower it. Actually, I'm so used to lowering stuff, so yeah. What you should do is get yourself lined up, turn it on, and what it does, it disperses it. Actually, I like that. Like, it sort of disperses it in the little, through these little ho hoses here. And yep, I do know I'll have that in the way. Unfortunately, as far as I'm aware, I've also forgot to say, is the 
irrigation stuff, you can't remove, like, gone around, had a look, and yeah, and like, for the life of me, I cannot find a way to remove those. But yeah, you sort of see how this all works. It all comes out through those little hoses and that. And that's where the efficiency comes from. It just sort of slightly spreads little bits down. And yeah, I'm leaving this to run. Obviously we've got the precision farming that on, so it's going to keep on dumping. And the amount we're using is actually not a lot. And obviously that is fertilizer. Of course I ain't going to do that by too much. However, let's go to our lime. Lime is infamous for losing love it very quickly, so let's go and see how much we are consuming with lime. Actually, with the lime itself, like, yeah, we only literally just lost 100 litres, so, or dumped 100 litres. Compare that to base game, that is about 50% more efficient, obviously. Give or take, exact has to be determined, but... In terms of the actual capabilities of it, it's not all pop and show for storytelling. That is actually a real thing. So yeah, so see, it comes out of the hoses and dumps on the ground. Slight issues with random clipping through the ground and that. Again, it doesn't affect the actual equipment itself. It doesn't affect the working speed and that. It's just a... It's more of a visual thing than anything else. But yeah, so that is all of our mods today. And as always, hope you enjoyed these mod reviews. If so, smash that button. Feel free to go down below. If you want to share some, please be my guest. If you're not subscribed to the channel yet, then please consider... But for you to do, hope you're nice day. But for now, this will be from our Evo Extreme, and I'll see you all very soon.